Hello YouTubers, this is the first in what I hope will be a series of videos about Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Decided to make a video about combat procedure in first edition AD&D circa 1979. This is once all the rule books have come out and since the books have been re-released recently by Wizards of the Coast, I feel like there are some people out there who are playing the game and some newcomers so I thought maybe I could help illuminate the combat procedure. So here we have the Dungeon Master's Guide. We're going to do a simple combat of three characters versus a Minotaur today. Now I try to be as by the book as I can be but I think many of you probably know having read the forums or if you're on any of the forums like Dragon's Foot the idea of by the book initiative in AD&D is kind of ludicrous. But here is how I do it and I hope it's at a level of complexity that most of you would enjoy. Okay, I'm going to introduce the characters. This is Elda, Elf, Fighter Magic User, level 2 in both classes. She has an effective armor class of 7, although she's wearing no armor, and that's because uh, she has a dexterity of 17 and has a defensive adjustment of minus 3. Here we have Ursula, the 4th level thief and leader of the party. She is also wearing no armor, but has a Dexterity defensive adjustment of minus four, having 18 dexterity, so her AC is effectively six. And here we have Krang, the fighter, third level. He's wearing splint armor, and so he has armor type seven, and he has no defensive adjustment at all, and he is in the front of the party. Now at this stage, I would have the players place their figures on the battle board. They would be mapping themselves up until this point but something is about to happen and I would actually ask them to get out a d6 and roll. I wouldn't tell them exactly why. This is the farthest they can see right now with Elda's lantern, which has a 30 foot radius. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the party to roll their d6 and what we're doing is determining surprise and they roll a one so that means they are surprised and they'll be surprised for one segment now normally I would have the encounter the monster roll a d6 to see if it's surprised as well but because I know the monster is a minotaur and it has scent tracking ability I'm going to rule that it already knows the party's there and so it's not surprised so the next step would be to determine the distance and in the case of surprise, you use a D3. Here's a D3 that I made. And you roll that and times that by 10. So 10 feet. So the monster basically just comes right out of the darkness at Krang. And I've already determined the monster's action. It's going to charge at Krang. And it has plenty of time to get there in one segment. Now I should note at this point that both Elda and Ursula are not surprised by this because of their dexterity adjustments, but they can't do anything offensive during this segment, although Elda does drop her lantern gently on the ground. Okay, so now we're going to roll for the monitor's attack versus Krang, the charge attack, and I roll a... he needs a 6 or better to hit, and it looks like we've rolled a total of 14, a 12 plus 2 for the monitor. It's more than enough to hit Krang, and Krang suffers 5 points of damage from the Monitor's halberd-like axe. So, Krang goes down from 13 to 8 hit points. And that is the end of the surprise segment. And now we're going to move on to round one. And before we roll group initiative, I'm going to ask each member of the party for their intentions this round. Krang's going to attack with his sword. Ursula is going to sling a bullet at it at short range, and Elda is going to cast Magic Missile. Now, because Ursula is firing a missile into an existing melee, she doesn't actually get to choose who her target is. That's going to be randomly determined. However, the Magic Missile uh, gets to choose a target. So we're going to roll for initiative here. Okay, the party rolls one. And the monster rolls one, so it looks like we have simultaneous initiative, which means that the missiles and the spells are going to go off first and followed by the melee, and the melee will go in order of lowest to highest weapon speed. Now we need to determine who Ursula is actually going to hit, 
And because the Minotaur is larger, it gets a slightly better chance of, of being hit than the smaller character, and Ursula's betting on that. The ratio is actually 1 to 1 1.5, according to the DMG, but that's too much for my brain to handle. So rather than do that, I'm going to use my D3 and say the Minotaur gets hit on a 1 to 2, and Krang gets hit on, on a 3. Oh, but we roll a 3, and it looks like Ursula's bullet is going to hit Krang if it hits anybody. She rolls a five, and that is a miss, luckily. So there's no way that she's going to hit Krang. But if she had rolled high enough to hit Krang's armor class, and mind you, she has plus three just for having high dexterity and plus two for hitting Krang from behind, she would have hit her comrade by accident. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the magic missile attack. Now, Elda's magic missile, the range is... 70 feet, well within range, no saves. We roll a two, and so that causes three points of damage on the Minotaur automatically. So the Minotaur goes down from 20 to 17 hit points. And now we're gonna move on and resolve the melee. So technically Krang will be able to get his telling blow in first, but I'm just gonna go ahead and roll both dice and just adjudicate them in order. So here we go. And Krang rolled an 8, and he gets plus 1 for strength and plus 2 versus the Minotaur's 10-type armor. But that only brings him up to 11, and he needs 12, so that's a miss for Krang. However, the Minotaur has rolled a natural 18 plus 2 for exceptional strength, and it only needs a 6, so that's definitely a hit. And since the Minotaur has two attacks per round, we're going to go ahead and roll the second attack now versus Krang. And that's an 8 plus 2, which makes 10, so that's also a hit. So Krang gets hit twice by the Minotaur this round, and that's 2d10 damage for the Minotaur's axe, which is treated as a halberd. And 19 points of damage, that brings Krang down to negative 10, more than enough to kill him in one single blow. And... That's that's the end for Krang. So moving on, here we are in round two, and I'm secretly noting the intention of the Minotaur, which is to it's going to advance this round towards the next combatant, and I would ask the party for their intentions, and Ursula wants to sling another bullet at it. She wants to keep distance between her and the monster, and Elda is going to cast shield on herself and hoping to attack the next round. Fair enough. So we're going to go ahead and roll initiative for the party. Oh, and the, the shield spell will bring Elda down to an effective armor class of four for this round and for the next seven rounds, actually, after this. So we'll roll monster initiative first, a three, and we'll roll party initiative six. So the party has initiative, so we can get Ursula's bullet off first, and since there's only one target now, we don't need to do a random determination of who it hits. We'll just go ahead and roll. Ursa rolls, uh, she needs a 15, she rolls an 8, and with her plus 3, that's only 11, that's a miss. And we can say that the shield is taking effect now, and the Minotaur moves into position. Here we are in round three, so um, I've already noted the intention of the Minotaur, which is to attack, and Ursula is in melee range, so she's going to attack this round. Elda, feeling brave, wants to charge in with her sword. She has her shield spell on, so she wants to do that. So we'll move on to initiative. Party rolls a three, and monster rolls a six. So the monster has won initiative this round. However, a charge move occurs outside of normal initiative order. So we'll resolve that first. And also Elda is charging into a melee that's already started. So I'm going to rule that there's a chance that Elda will accidentally run her comrade through with her sword rather than the, the Minotaur. This is because of what we call the fog of war. It's trying to simulate the chaos of a melee here, so there's a slight chance that Ursula will get in the way of Elda's charge. So we're gonna randomly determine, since since the 
Minotaur is much larger than Ursula, I'm going to only give a 1 in 4 chance of Elda accidentally charging into Ursula. So we'll roll a, a d4, and a 1 would be bad. Oh, and it is a 1, so that means Elda has indeed accidentally run into Ursula during her charge, and so we need to resolve that. And mind you, Ursula is only armor class 10 now because she's being attacked from behind, no defense adjustment, and Elda gets a plus 2 to her attack. But we roll a 1, and that only makes a 3, that's not enough to hit. So luckily, Ursula is spared Elda's sword during this melee, and we're going to move on and determine the attack rolls of the Minotaur. Now, the Minotaur gets two attacks per round, and I would be a bad DM if I just chose those attacks on my own, so I'm going to randomly determine who gets what attacks. We're going to make Elda even and Ursula odd. Each gets an attack. So I'm just going to roll both attacks at once. Blue for Elda, yellow for Ursa. So uh, on the blue, the Minotaur needs a 9 but rolls a 3. Even with its plus 2, that's only 5. So thankfully, the shield saves Elda this round. However, Ursula uh, the Minotaur needs a 7, and he has indeed rolled a 7 with his plus 2, that makes an 8. So Ursula's hit this round, and that means we're going to roll some damage. So that's 1d10 damage, and we roll a 8. So Ursula's gone down from 16 hit points to 8, and that concludes round 3, and I think our party isn't feeling so tough right now versus this monster. We've got one dead character and one wounded character and Elda is still at her full 11 hit points. So we're moving on to round four. Both sides want to keep fighting. So we're going to roll initiative monster initiative first. It's a five party initiative four. So the monster has initiative and uh, again, we have to randomly determine who the monster is going to direct its attacks at. Again, odd and even. So odd, that's Elda, and even, that's Ursula. So each one gets an attack. Again, we'll use uh, blue for Elda, yellow for Ursula here. Um, so we'll just make those attacks. Okay, so monster needs a 9 to hit Elda and rolls a 6 plus 2, 8. So that's a miss. Her shield has saved her again. However, that's a 19 there on Ursula, so that's definitely a hit, and we're going to have to roll some damage for Ursula. So, one point of damage, so that's not so bad. So Ursula goes down from eight to seven hit points, and uh, it's now our party's chance to attack. Elda needs a 13 or better, and she gets plus two for the armor type of the Minotaur, which is armor type 10. And she rolls a nine plus two, so that's an 11, that's still a miss, doesn't quite get it. Ursula rolls, she needs 15 or better to hit. And what do we roll here? And that's a one, so that's, so Ursula's out of luck, and that's the end of round Four. We're moving on to round five. Monster rolls five initiative. Party rolls four initiative. The monster's going first. The Minotaur will attack Elda and Elda again. So both attacks are at Elda. The first one is a 14. That's a hit. The second one is a four plus two, six. That's a miss. Elda will take nine points of damage and that brings her down to two hit points. And now moving on to party attacks. Elda needs a 13, and she rolls a 14, so that's that's a hit. So the Minotaur takes 1d8 points of damage, that's for 2 points of damage, so it's down to 15 hit points. And then Ursula makes her attack, and she rolls a 1. So tough luck for Ursula. And that is the end of round five, and we're moving on to round six. So here we are in round six, and our party finally decides that they're going to flee. So you can do that, but at a cost. So we won't roll initiative for this round. There's no need to, because the Minotaur is going to get a free attack 
on the party. And again, we'll randomly determine who the free attacks are upon. And we roll, uh, again, odd even. So that's even, that's Ursula, odd, that's Elda. So each one will get an attack. And the Minotaur needs to roll a three or better to hit Ursula and also to hit Elda as well because the magical shield only works for the front attacks, not for rear attacks. Plus the Minotaur gets a total of plus four on these attacks. So both these rolls are more than enough to hit. We have a six and a, and a five. So Elda takes two points of damage enough to knock her unconscious. Ursula takes three points of damage. She's down to now down to four hit points, but she gets to run for her life. And now we need to determine whether or not the Minotaur is going to chase after her. And we're going to reference the pursuit rules here. And it says here, that if the matrix or key states that the monsters in question will pursue, or if the monster manual so states, then pursuit will certainly occur. And I'm pretty sure the monster manual does state something about the Minotaur always pursuing. So I'm just going to grab the monster manual and I don't like to normally reference rule books right in the middle of play while I'm DMing, but it does happen sometimes. Okay, so here we are. And yes, it says right here, they are able to track prey by scent with 50% accuracy and they will always pursue if it is in sight. So I will read that as uh, the Minotaur would definitely pursue Ursula. And since they have the same movement rate, the pursuit will go on for quite some time until Ursula is out of sight. And let's assume that Ursula has done her mapping and knows the labyrinth-like structure of the of dungeon and is able to duck down a corridor at some point and the Minotaur loses sight of her and will break off pursuit. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope to make some more videos in the future showing first edition AD&D combat procedure. I hope it was a bit of an enlightenment for some of you who haven't experienced it before and maybe even for those who play the game.